center of the Mopar world for August of 2021, the Mopar Nationals in Columbus, Ohio. If there was ever any doubt of the power of being first out of the gate, the Mopar Nats is a classic example of that. The Mopar Nats, or the Nats as is officially called these days, just celebrated its 40th year and Mopar Collector's Guide was there to participate in all the Mopar mayhem. This year would have been the 41st running of the Nats if Kovic restrictions last year wouldn't have sidelined the show. Whether you love or hate the Nats, you have to give credit where credit is due. And I'm here to tell you that this Mopar show is the show that ignited everything that we call the Mopar hobby today. The Mopar Nats literally launched Mopar Collector's Guide magazine and countless other Mopar restoration companies that we all rely on today to keep our Mopars running. Add to that that the Nats was the literal model for every Mopar show that followed. With that being said, I would be remiss not to point out that no other Mopar show has created so much negative buzz around it over the years. Perhaps that's because there's a group of guys that got so pissed off at the Mopar Nats one year that rather than go to the show, they got together with a witch on that same weekend to put a negative spell on it. That's a serious story that I heard. While many of the complaints about the show are well earned, some of that negativity has come from jealousy of its success. Over the years, countless shows have tried to unseat this show's status, but today it remains in the position number two, only topped by Chrysler's at Carlisle. Because of unreconcilable differences between Mopar and the promoter Jim Belinda, they decided to drop the name Mopar off the front of the official name of the show. So today, the show is just called The Nats. For those that have gone to the show since before they can remember, it will always be known as the Mopar Nats to us. After the Mopar mark was dropped from the front of the Mopar Nationals name, the Mopar-sponsored Roadkill Knights Drag Race event in nearby Michigan was moved on the very same weekend as the Nats. While the promoters of Roadkill Knights will tell you that that was just a coincidence, from the outside looking in, it sure seems like it was done on purpose as a shot to the Nats. Regardless if done on purpose or not, it has definitely cut into the Mopar Nationals drag racing program that has for a long time been the show's edge over Carlisle. Once the gold standard, OE judging at the Nats has struggled as of late to garner any real number of entries despite a valiant effort from an under-equipped staff of judges. This year, the manufacturer's midway was moved from its longtime location for a 1970 and 71 car display that never ever materialized. This left a huge unused void in the front of the venue and left many scratching their heads as to why the show's popular midway was displaced for nothing. It's always easy being a critic when something is not your responsibility, and I'm quite sure that getting this thing fired back up for 2021 after being down for a year was quite the struggle. I'm just glad to see this legendary Mopar show back in action again. I think the best way to sum up the Mopar Nats is, the Nats is the Nats. While the world has changed drastically in 40 years, the NAS continues to be put on the same way as it always has. If you can base your expectations accordingly, going to this show, you'll have a great time. When this year's NATS was said and done, there was no question that even after 40 years, it can still bring the masses. For 2021, the attendance appeared to be as strong, if not stronger, than it was in 2019. As for the next chapter of the NATS, Judging by the success of its 40th running, I expect it to continue on just as it always has for 2022. As far as I was concerned, the best of show went to this monster power wagon. Best modern motivated Mopar? I think it would go to this impeccably crafted Hellcat motivated Valiant. When it came to the most significant Mopar, that choice was much harder to settle on because of the large array of heavy-hitting historic race cars on display. In the end, I settled on not one, but all three of the Motown missile cars that were in attendance. These race cars were literally responsible for pioneering the fledgling pro-stock racing class for Mopar. In addition to the couple of cars we mentioned here, there were many more that we shot, and of course you'll find them in the future pages of Mopar Collector's Guide magazine. To wrap up the 2021 Nats coverage, I'll leave you this month from ground zero of one of the most impressive General Lee jumps I've ever seen.
Bowling Green, Kentucky. Till next month, I'll see you on the pages of MCG.